Welcome to the Melbourne Cup at fabulous Flemington and the end of a century of magic moments. It has become more than the race that stops the nation. It stops our hearts as well. From the adrenaline rush through our veins as the gates fly open to the thunder of the home straight and the twinkle in our eyes as history is made before. It's a sense of pride, of being there. It's a breathtaking three-minute ride of emotions that will end in either agony or ecstasy, but will always be worth the price of the journey. to a bolt of lightning that became a national hero. The quest for the Golden Chalice begins today. Welcome to Derby Day, the greatest day of racing on the Australian turf calendar. A day when the champions of the future take their first steps towards immortality. And the dreams of racing's elite will be unfolded for all to see. Keys to the mounting yard. This is Australian racing at its finest. Welcome to the 1999 Melbourne Cup Carnival, live and exclusive to Network 10. are blooming, all sorts of vehicles are rolling into the car park, the Champers is on ice and we are set for one of the great days of racing on the Australian turf calendar. Good morning everyone and welcome to Flemington, Australia's international race course on Amy Victoria Derby Day, a race meeting for the purists but also the first day of a week-long party. Well, today marks the start of the 1999 at Melbourne Cup Carnival with a day regarded traditionally as the greatest single day of racing on the Australian turf calendar. And shortly I'll be joined by a panel of experts, Jenny Chapman, Richard Friedman and John Letts to talk about the Spring Carnival, today's racing and of course the all-important Foster's Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. But today is much more than just another race meeting. It's an event. It attracts all sorts of people for all sorts of reasons. To help set the scene, here's a lady with her finger on the pulse of what's going on, where and with whom. In the Channel 10 marquee in the members' car park, a very good morning to the beautiful Sandra Sully. Good morning, Peter. Yes, I'm very excited to be a part again of this year's Melbourne Cup Carnival. It's going to be a wonderful week, full of fun and festivities, as always. And nowhere more so than the traditional Derby Eve ball, which was, of course, last night for all the young members. It's a great night out and a must-do on the social event calendar this year. And, and every year, as you can see, hundreds of people turning out. I somewhat suspect they may be giving the uh, Barocca Reserves a bit of a nudge, as they'll be doing throughout the week. But I guess many of us may be in the same in the same boat. Uh, many of the young members will be making their way out here today, but as you can see, they had a great time last night. Now, loads of celebrities will be popping by the marquee this week to drop in and, and say good day. Some of those uh, coming by today include designer Katie Davenport, aromatherapy queen Natalie Bloom, American singing sensation Martina McBride, and we must point to... Uh, an interview on Tuesday with the Australian uh, round the world solo yachtsman Jesse Martin. He's going to be coming by. So we're really looking forward to catching up with him. But now over to the birdcage where today's runners are stable before their big races and to a man who has an enormous passion for horses as we know, our very own Tim Webster. Good morning, Tim. 
morning, Sandra. Indeed, I do. In fact, I spend as much time out here with the horses as I possibly can. Good morning to you. Good morning to our millions of viewers around Australia and indeed around the world. This year, we're joined by cable viewers throughout North America, Canada and the USA for all four days of the carnival. So welcome to you, of course, and we hope you enjoy it. Of course, Melbourne Cup Day is Tuesday. For us, it's the first Tuesday in November. For you, it's the first Monday night in November. It's a 3,200 metre race or two miles, and it's a handicap. There doesn't seem to be any handicap to people coming here to Flemington from Australia, indeed from right around the world. It's really become a truly international event, not just the Melbourne Cup, but all four days. Last year, 285,000 people came through these turnstiles, and given a little bit of good weather, we can expect record attendances again, I'm sure. But of course, it's not just about racing this four days. It is one great big fashion parade, and keeping an eye on the beautiful people at Flemington is our Lynn Talon. Well, thank you, Tim, and you are a man with a keen eye for fashion, so you would have seen just how diverse and beautiful the latest looks are. I guess to summarise, I'd have to say femininity, but there are many styles and many influences that we'll see here on the lawns of Flemington. Traditionally, Derby Day features a lot of the colours black and white, but it's also Gentleman's Day, so expect to see some dapper-looking fellas as well as the ladies out here. But, of course, the scene will change dramatically for Cup Day. Cup Day is a day where anything goes in the fashion style. Oaks Day brings out ladies in their stylish traditional outfits. They're quite beautiful. Oaks Day, look forward to that on Thursday. And of course, Stakes Day is probably pared down a little bit, a little more casual. But look, I'll be bringing you glimpses of what the best dressed are wearing out here on Flemington in Myers Fashions on the Field. I'll also be doing some in inspirational interviews with some of Australia's best fashion designers and bringing you some of the fun from Flemington's most notorious party zone, the birdcage. Looking forward to it, but what is this weather doing? Let's find out from the very fashionable, questionably fashionable Tim Bailey. Fashionable? Well, there's a first for everything, isn't there, folks? Welcome to famous Flemington, the course of history. And there he is behind me in bronze, Farlap, the legend. Now, if this isn't the greatest week in Australian sport, we don't know what is. The big question at the moment is not how to find a winner. What is the weather going to do? Are we going to need this dastardly fellow or not? Up or down? Well, the Weather Bureau, as we check it for you, says probably. We have got a cloudy one, rain at times, and a top of 23. Now, as always, we've got to thank the VRC, the Victorian Racing Club. Yes, but also the VRC, the very reliable camera. It will bring you the famous faces, all the fun places of the Cup Carnival races. It goes to places it shouldn't be allowed into and gets the results. Looking forward to bringing you all the colour and the character of the Melbourne Cup Carnival, starting with Derby Day. But right now, here's Peter Donegan. Tim Bailey, you are going to be up to some mischief over the next few days. And there are grey skies, as Tim mentioned, hanging over Flemington. But it is Derby Day and the program kicks off at 11.25 this morning with the William Inglis Carbine Club Stakes. And it is a day of highlights because we have three Group 1 races, three Group 2s and three Group 3s. Uh, and the Group 1 treble is the Amy Victoria Derby at 2.45. These are uh, Eastern Times. Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes at 3.25 and the Salinger Stakes at five minutes after four. Well, Tim Bailey said the important thing was to get the uh, weather conditions. Not so much important to find winners. I think the next three people might disagree with him. We're going to do our best to find winners for you throughout the day. And every Derby day, I assemble with my mates again at the start of the carnival, and I'm happy to do it again this year. Jenny Chapman, Richard Friedman, John Let's. good morning to you. Morning, Peter. Peter. Yeah, good Jennifer, morning, Pete. Welcome back from Hong Kong. Thank you very much, and it's great to be here once again for the wonderful spring carnival that we have. I've got to keep an eye on this weather, though, because it might bring some wet trackers in if we do get a lot of rain soon. Although the good thing so far has been that it's only been a sprinkle, really. Yes, it has, so no problems at the moment. Rich, what's the uh, Friedman Stables position coming into this carnival? Well, we're going to have a bit of a, a light carnival, I would say. We don't have the, the number of good horses we've had in the past, but we're, uh, we're doing our best. We've got a few good runners, so uh, we're quite satisfied with our representation. And Johnny Letts, you've already been out there on the track with your old mate Banjo yesterday and uh, don't you make a fine couple? We do actually but I'd just like to get that guy that hopped under the running rail when I was going yes, past he had a white shirt on right. and I don't think Banjo likes white very much. <laughs> He's become part of the carnival hasn't he? He really has Pete and it's interesting to note with a horse like him you know when the carnival's coming around people ring me and say you know where can we do a story on him? You know Canberra, Sydney, everybody wants, just wants to know him. Well you might get a bit wet out there on the track as I said we have had uh, a little bit of rain early this morning not too much to worry about but we do want to find out about the all important condition of the track and the two gentlemen who can tell us more are out there on the racing surface at the moment. Dan Maliki and Gary Willits, good morning to you both. 
Thank you very much, Peter. Good morning, everyone. Well, the track officially is rated good today, which is fantastic. It's the sort of uh, racetrack condition you'd love for one of the best race days in the world. So track officially good. The rail is in the true position, and the penetrometer is 3.86, which again backs up the fact that this track is in the perfect good order. Yeah, definitely, Dan. Look, uh, I spoke to Mr. Rod Spradfield, the course manager. He told me that he put one millimetre of water on yesterday. This weather today, we've got a little light rain here but it's nothing. And this track, I'd say, is as good as perfect as I've ever seen. You can just see I can't even get this umbrella into this track. The grass is a little bit shorter than normally at the start of a carnival, but uh, I'd say, look, you can back horses to come from anywhere today. There's not one breath of air. You don't have to worry about the horses leading or from behind. As I said, it's a good track, but I'd say it's near to perfect. The last couple of meetings here, the inside and outside, there's been very little difference. And probably the closest that they've raced for quite a few years, Gary, and even walking this section of the track this morning, we found very little difference between both sides. Yeah, no difference at all, Dan, and that's what I say, like these a couple of straight races, if they, horses want to go to the outside, I don't think it'd be any advantage, I'd come to the inside myself. And it has been drizzly rain throughout most of the morning, as uh, Peter had pointed out, but you wouldn't uh, know it down here on track, apart from the, uh, the spots of rain on my scone, which I can easily identify. There's no moisture seemingly in the ground, because uh, to go through with our boots on, uh, we're not uh, capturing any moisture at all, so it has done absolutely nothing uh, as far as damage is concerned to the track. It's good, don't get put off by the rain, at least at this stage. No, look, just if you like a horse and you think, you know, it can handle uh, the dry fast, anything like that, good tracks, just back it. OK, that's our look at the Flemington track today, recapping that it's rated officially good and it's in the perfect uh, good track order, rail true, penetrometer 3.86 and good punting. Good on you, Dan. Thanks very much, Dan Maliki, who will be calling his 11th Melbourne Cup for Network 10 on Tuesday. Well, the other important piece of information at the start of any day of racing is naturally enough the scratching. So let's check them out now, beginning with the first race on the card, the William Inglis Carbine Club Stakes, 1,600 metres at 11.25, take out number 15, My Grenadier. And uh, also, I believe number one over comes out as well. And so no rider changes from race one. Race two is the Shivers Regal, and it starts at five minutes after 12. The scratching there is number six, Harley, and a field of eight to run. Third event, the Saab Quality, over 2,500 metres at 12.45. And here, there are no scratchings, 14 running. Race four, the Hardy Brothers Classic, at 1.25, take out number nine, the Bartered Bride. 18 Fellowship and 19 Fortunata, 9, 18 and 19, leaving a field of 16. Race 5, the Qantas Wakeful Stakes, Group 2, 2,000 metres at 5 past 2, is clear, a field of 13. The big one, the Amy Victoria Derby, worth a million dollars at 2.45, Group 1, all clear, 16 running. The Group 1 Louis Vuitton McKinnon stakes is race 7 at 3.25. An important scratching here. Northern Drake hasn't come up after that injury that kept him out of the Cox Plate last week. So he's out number 3, Northern Drake, in a field of 13. Race 8 is the Salinger stakes. The third of the Group 1 treble take out 17 Charm Scene Land and 18 Della Vista. A field of 16 to run. And race 9 is the Yellenby Stud Stakes, and that is all clear of scratchings and a field of 13 to face the starter in the final event on the card. Well, there has been a lot of betting activity going on over Melbourne Cup carnivals of the past couple of years. Remember, there was a huge plunge in the Amy Victoria Derby going back to 1993 with Mahogany. We're going to check out the tote figures as they stand on the uh, the big one of the day, the Amy Victoria Derby, and then we'll be heading down to the betting ring along with Tim Gossage to find out exactly what is going on down there very shortly. But as we survey this beautiful scene here at Flemington, we look forward to what we've already described as one of the great days of racing. Shogun Lodge is $3.50 on Super Tab. This is for a $1 investment. Freemason 12, Diatribe 680, Blackfriars 5, Good odds about the Derby Trial winner, Troubadour, 52. Chief Scout, 13. Royal Integrity, 47. Liberty Hall, 820. Cloth of Gold, 750. So you can see the favourite is highlighted in Shogun Lodge. Chiming Door, 55. Big odds, Tariyama. Camp Amani's is one that will have its fair share of supporters today at 33. Unlimiting, 97. And then you're looking over the $100 mark for Happy Festival, Duty Officer and a Rock of the Ages. They are super tab dividends for $1. And, of course, the Army Victoria Derby, the big one, coming up later on this afternoon at uh, 2.45. Well, as I said, there's going to be plenty of activity on the tote, plenty of activity in the betting ring. Will we see a repetition of that massive plunge on 
mahogany going back in the Amy Victoria Derby six years ago. If we do, here's the fellow who's going to keep us up to date with everything that's happening. Tim Gossage, good morning to you, Timothy. Yeah, good morning, Peter. Great to be back here again this year. And as you mentioned, over the years, there has been some enthralling battles between the bookmakers and the punters. In 1993, mahogany, that plunge led, of course, by Kerry Packer and Lloyd Williams. And those two men, of course, have struck gold on Cup Day over the last couple of years with Might and Power and Jezebel. They've literally taken millions out of the bookies' bags with those plungers on Cup Day. But today is Derby Day. Notoriously, it is a great punting day and an intriguing day between the bookmakers and the punters. The tip is that Blackfriars and Shogun Lodge will certainly open up the pronounced favourites in the bookmakers' ring. Talking to a few bagmen today, they've said they're going to take on Shane Dye and Shogun Lodge, but they're going to take on Shane Dye not just today, but over the next four days of the carnival. It is a fantastic atmosphere already. The boards are being set for the first race. And, Peter, over the next four days, I'll bring you the blow-by-blow -blow description between the bookies and the punters. Big Timothy Gossage keeping an eye on things down in the betting ring and also releasing a few moths from that wallet, no doubt, throughout the afternoon. Well, the big one coming up later on, $650,000 in prize money to the winner of the Amy Victoria Derby today and also a beautiful trophy worth $5,000. It is one of the most sought-after trophies in Australian racing and will guarantee that horse's future for a long time. Let's take our first break. As we do, we're going to have a look at Milton Black's prognostications for the carnival today. We're off and running in 1999 at Flemington. Omni Corps was racing as a two-year-old. I seen him one day at, um, at Warwick Farm and I said to Bart, back in them days, I said, gee, make a nice derby horse that Bart. Well, he come to Melbourne and I didn't ride him. Johnny Marshall rode him and he had uh, Bozam, I think, in the derby that year. And I got on him and, and won the derby. So, you know, it was a great thrill to be coming back here to the field and, uh, you know, sort of waved me whip around. The crowd was roaring and uh, old arena said, no, I'm going back the other way and let me stand in the mid -air. So it was, uh, I suppose, took a bit of the glamour off it, but it didn't hurt any of me pride. Yeah, I always thought it was a match race, which it turned out to be. I had a lovely run. Uh, Mr Smith told me to go forward, stick him outside the leader and, and dominate the race, and that's what happened. He was just too good on the day. The other horse got into a little bit of trouble, but I still say that he'd got out and come at me at the furlong. I reckon I would have held him. Some Derby memories of days gone by there with the Cassidy brothers and Shane Dye, and they'll be out there doing battle with the best from around Australia and indeed around the world here at Flemington on Amy Victoria Derby Day. Well, time to take a look at the first race on the program, the William Inglis Carbine Club Stakes. It's over 1,600 metres, a Group 3 event. Now, there was some confusion as to whether the top one over, number one is a scratching, but over is in, I can tell you that. So there's one scratching in the first, and that is number 15, My Grenadier. So we've got a field of 16 running in race one on the card. Jen, generally this race provides a pretty good galloper. Is it going to be the case this year? Um, Peter, I think there's uh, actually three good gallopers in this race. I think you could probably back any one of them, but I've put them this way. I've gone for number five, Tarumba. Uh, this horse was most impressive um, uh, at Caulfield. I thought it was a terrific effort there over the 1400, stepping up to the 1600, and I do think that uh, he's a very, very good horse. And for second, I'll put in Chattanooga. He'll get back, but he'll run on strongly. And Oval Office for third. Oval Office for you, Rich? I like Oval Office. I thought he's run in the Caulfield Guineas at his last start, where he came from near last. No other horse made ground in the race. It was good enough for me. Let's see. Let's compromise. Yes, second run this way going, Pete, and I think he'll improve a lot. Well, I've gone for Chattanooga. I thought his run at Caulfield was outstanding when he came from the back of the field. But look at that. There's a very good indicator of just how open this race is. We've come up with five different selections there in the first race on the program. Race two, the Shivers Regal. It's due to commence at 12.05. That's uh, Eastern... Uh, time 1200 meters is the journey the scratching is number six harley we've only got a small field of eight to run here but i'm looking forward to seeing this horse again falvalon rich he's never been beaten falvalon fabulous horse he yeah. really is good he's had 
no losses. He's defeated everything they've set him against. He started off in Queensland, Pete, and he's worked his way south, and last start at Caulfield, he cleaned up a pretty good field. So uh, I think his form's good enough for me. I can see him going on his winning way. Well, I don't think we can find anything to beat him, can we? No, he is a fabulous horse. Let's see. He rates number one. Yeah, he's far too good for these, I think. He'll be pretty short, but uh, might be a good one to start off your day, maybe take a few in the first race in running doubles or take a few in the third race in running doubles as well. Only one risk. He's never been up the straight 1,200 metre course, and some horses, regardless of their form, just don't go up that course. So well, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. We'll know shortly afternoon, and then a little bit further afternoon, we'll find out what's going to happen in the Saab quality as some of the Melbourne Cup hopefuls go through their final rehearsal. And we're going to have a look at the Geelong Cup, Johnny Letts, and particularly the run of brew which was a very good performance to identify him there he is in the red cap with the light blue and the black sleeves and didn't he make some ground at the end here he didn't have a lot of luck either Pete and uh, he was ridden this day by um, uh, Stephen Arnold today he dropped four kilos and Lance O'Sullivan and the horse that won this race actually Behemoth I'd give him a chance in the Melbourne Cup mm. uh, but brew I thought was a very good run he's won over the distance he's won on the track and he's won on, on this type of ground so he brings him into the race doesn't it yeah, he won't know himself with 51 kilos but what about your selection? What have you come up with? Well, actually, I did come up with Arkady. I thought his run in the Canberra Cup was terrific run behind the, the, the bold front running horse uh, that's what I think about five straight up north, and uh, I do like Arkady. Well, I think you like Arkady, don't you, Jen? Yes, uh, Arkady yeah. or Arkady. <laughs> <laughs> I call him Arkady, yeah. Different, I agree. Different he's, state, different name. Yeah. He's, he's a lot fitter, and stepping up to the 2,500, I think it'll really suit him. I think it will, Jen. A few of us have gone for the Freedman horse, Rose of War. Yeah, she's in good form. Her run in the Caulfield Cup was a very, very good run, and, you know, I'd be surprised if she doesn't, uh, you know, go go on with the job here and I think she's well placed in this race. Yeah, I think if you put any of those horses from the Caulfield Cup into this race, they'd start a very short price favourite. On to the Hardy Brothers Classic for the Mayors, race 4, 1600 metres at 125. What do you think here, Jennifer? Well, I thought Nassau had a very good chance here, Peter. Number three, um, you go back to her last preparation, she won three there in a row and um, just a, a good horse. Back to Mayors class here and it'll really suit her. Rich, you've come up with uh, Nicola Lash. She didn't have a lot of luck at Caulfield. No, and she probably reserves her worst runs for Flemington, but uh, I think she's in good form. She's been in good form for some time, Pete, and uh, I'll stick with her. Let's see you agree with Jennifer and I with Noir Sia. Yes, I do, Pete. I seen her win the Sedgwick Classic in Adelaide, and uh, very impressive that day, and I think she can go on with it today. And amongst the other tips there, Rainbow Bubbles and uh, Rose of Day, so quite a few chances in race number four on the card. Now, race five, this is one of the big ones, and we've got to look forward to this one being appointed to the Oaks on Thursday. Here we go with the 1,000 guineas as we take a look at the wakeful, Dan Glisser. Now, this performance, Rich, I thought she got on the wrong leg at this point, but I like the way she kept on coming over the final stages. Oh, she's got a lot of courage, Dan Glisser, and she was on her wrong leg. She just jumped onto the right leg there. She's back on a wrong leg there, and she's really running all over the track, but uh, she keeps coming, and she keeps fighting. She's a real fighter. A couple of other good runs in that race, too, and uh, I think you'll see the winner of this race come out of that field. Yeah, Shazoo's in, uh, I'm a Ripper is in, uh, and uh, there were a couple of very good runs. Yeah. My Sienna was also a Correct. good run in that race. We're going to take a look at some vision from track work the other morning, which uh, really struck me. This Smites's rivalry, this grey filly, uh, to be ridden by Glenn Dorrell for Joe Hall here at Flemington. Now, this is pretty good work. She's working with Shea Kingston. Johnny Letts, you've ridden uh, horses in work many times. I like the way she ended her gallop here. Pete, she's been very impressive in that late. A uh, couple of times she's had a fair bit of luck, but, I mean, that's, uh, that's racing, isn't it? Uh, but she does know where the winning post is, this filly, and she really gets there tough. But that's good work, mm. very good work. Back in May, she did beat Flower Tribe uh, in the size produce in South, uh, South Australia, so it's good form. Do you like Dan Glisser, though, Jen? Yeah, I'm sticking with her. I think she's got the class. Rich? I like my Sienna. I don't think any of her runs have been bad. I think she, the last time she raced at Flemington here was in the Manifold Stakes and ran very well, won easily. So I'm going to stick with her. And that is the first leg of the quadrilla. Let's see, and Dan Glisser, you think will get us off to a good start? I think so, Pete, yes. Uh, the horse, my Sienna, that you tipped, Rich, remember the day that the, she got hit in the flanks and she, uh, That's right. she half yeah. figured she would have nearly won that day too, yeah. so yeah. she's going to be pretty hard to beat. Yeah, I think Dan Glisser is the class, and I think she might carry on with uh, what the last two Wakeful winners have done, and that is go on to win the Oaks on Thursday. But it is certainly one of the big lead-up races. So there we go. There are the first five races. We're going to come back and take a look at the Amy Victoria Derby very shortly. As we go to the break, though, here's more from Milton.
Albany. Flashbacks to derbies of days gone by. Welcome back to Flemington and we're going to take a look at the 1999 version of the Amy Victoria derby. Blackfriars Jen is going to be one of the favourites in the race and rightly so, especially after a terrific performance in the Norman Robinson. I thought it was gone at the 800 metre mark. Well, I don't think he really handled that t type of track either, Peter. So it was a very good effort and he's done everything right. He's won his last two and I thought uh, he's going into this race extremely well. Let's take a look at this performance and there he is now and he really found the line like a horse who's going to have absolutely no problems with 2,500 metres. Yes, and there's Freemasons in the pink as well, and Chief Scout, uh, who's also had another run since then, and he's been racing well too. And Shogun Lodge in the green colours yes. on the outside, wobbled off the track on the home turn. Yes, he did, and uh, he's probably a little query staying the distance, but he's got plenty of class about him. I thought one thing that that race indicated, Jen, was that we do have a pretty even lot of three-year-olds this year. There wasn't much between them at the finish. I don't think there will be today either. No, well, there's a few at the bottom of the field that do fade away a little bit. <laughs> oh, the bottom of the field. Yes. yes, but the top chances, I think we could see probably five or six chances. Quite possibly too. And uh, the fact that, you know, there has been some leaders in the past, they've got a good record in the derby. Uh, Chief Scout's probably not out of it either. George Hanlon, Rich, 82 years of age. He's won three Melbourne Cups. Can he win his first derby today with Diatribe? I reckon he can. I'd love to see George win his first, uh, his first derby, did you say? Yep. Yeah, really. I would have thought George had won one before. But here's uh, Diatribe at Mooney Valley on the 23rd and the uh in the vase which is a great lead up race to the uh to the derby he and, finished uh, off nicely too oh, he, he did he, you know he had these covered a fair way out and he uh he just spaced them on the way to the line that's cloth of gold in third place too one of the top contenders today trained by bart cummings and chief scout again in second so yeah. uh it's it's good form you know that form is holding up bart's got three runners in the race one of them john letts was very unlucky in the derby trial stakes at geelong campamani's is his name yes and his father's already won a derby grosvenor and uh here it is here, and this is uh, Bart's horse here, Camper Money's. But gee, Bart's won five derbies, he's going for his six. So, uh, and uh, the winner of this comes from behind him, actually, Pete. Troubadour. Yeah, he had a beautiful run, he did, didn't, didn't he, Jen, Troubadour? It's interesting here, though, Peter, just interrupt, because he can't get the whip out. It's uh, caught in the main. So um, that was in the early part of the straight there as well. The winner um, had the lovely run. Camper Money's had to work hard, went around them three and four deep. John, I thought he was entitled to weaken here, but look at the way he's gone to the line. He did, Pete. I, I, I just... Doubt Troubadour really against Blackfriars because Blackfriars did hold him easily last time. And I, I, I do think that the second horse, Camper Money, is going to be hard to beat because he's bred to stay. And the other horse, as you know, um, Troubadour is out of a Rory system here and might just find it a little bit. And he's huge odds too, Camper yeah. Money, as we saw on the uh, toad call before. All right. There are the replays, there are the facts and figures. There's one other horse that we're going to have a look at, and that is Freemason. We did see him in the replays. He worked out here with Arena the other day. Uh, first of all, we'll take a look at your selections there, and here is Freemason. Uh, over on the inside of Arena, wasn't bad work. He's round about the 10 to 1 mark, probably entitled to be about that.